Good morning and happy Mother's Day. Although I miss seeing you all in person and look forward to seeing you all again hopefully very soon, I am glad that we are able to gather together in spirit. Experiencing church online is different for all of us. I found physically walking from my home to church gave me time to prepare to be fully in God's presence. The action of walking helped me leave my distractions behind. The time that sitting on the couch and turning on the TV did not give me to the same extent. So I ask that you take a deep breath. As an action of leaving your distractions behind. I have chosen a song that I have linked below. It's a slow song and you can sing along or simply listen and let it help bring you into the full presence of God. You can now pause and click the first link below if you choose to do so. Today is Mother's Day, a day that we celebrate our mothers. Leading up to Mother's Day, I find myself thinking about what I could do for Mother's Day. And I also find myself reflecting on the memories that me and my mother have made together. This year, one particular memory came to mind. Now, I've always been a wanderer. When something catches my attention, I tend to casually walk towards what has caught my attention, or even walk aimlessly when I've been caught in my own thoughts, which I can imagine was quite distressful for my mom when I was five years old and would do this. I remember once I did this in the supermarket. I think I saw chocolate, so I walked over to what had caught my attention and then realized I did not know where my mom was. Very quickly, I was a little five-year-old girl in distress crying, Mom, Mom, where are you? All around the supermarket. It did not take long for my mom to hear my voice, find me, and comfort me. Now, I'm not sure why, but this memory has stuck with me and I still remember it well. Day. With that in mind, let me read the passage for this morning. The passage, passage is John 10, 1 to 10, and I will be reading the NIV translation. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who, who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls the sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them. And his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Let us pray. Father in 
heaven as we gather together in spirit. We ask that you give those who have gathered listening ears and open hearts to hear from you. I pray that you bless the words I have prepared and speak through them so it is you they hear. In Jesus' name, Amen. Setting the scene just before this passage is a man who has been born blind from birth, whom Jesus heals on the Sabbath. After Jesus heals the blind man, the blind man was questioned by the Pharisees on who healed him. When he answered Jesus, they questioned how Jesus could have healed him on the Sabbath. After long debate between the healed man who up front said, I do not know if he is a sinner, but I do know that I was blind and now I see. And the man could have not done this apart from God. Showing he knew what the Pharisees did not. He understood who Jesus was, while the Pharisees refused to believe. In conclusion, the Pharisees excluded the healed man from their synagogue community, abusing their power. They did this as if they had the authority to decide who does and does not belong to the covenant people. In response, Jesus defends the healed man and convicts the Pharisees, which leads us to our passage for this morning. In this passage, Jesus uses the biblical image of sheep as God's people and, turn, and Jesus turns to the question of the true and false owners of the sheep, showing that he is the shepherd and they the false shepherd. In this passage, Jesus highlights who he is and the relationship between him and his followers. In this passage, Jesus gives us an image of a sheep, a good shepherd, a gatekeeper and a thief and robber who attempts to enter the sheepfold illegitimately. It is well known that Jesus refers to himself as the shepherd. It comes by no surprise that Jesus uses this imagery of a shepherd as it echoes throughout all of the Old Testament. Although looking deeper into the shepherd imagery, some treat shepherding as a dishonorable profession, like tax gathering. Like field watchmen, shepherds were normally unable to join communal prayers of local communities. Those who especially looked down on shepherds were people with wealth and status. This would have included Jesus' opponents in this narrative. In some ways it may seem odd that Jesus would refer to himself as someone his opponents would generally look down upon. But looking deeper into this imagery, I personally see it fits perfectly as it captures who Jesus is, that he cares for his followers or flock if you will, that he leads them by going ahead of them and is familiar with his flock as he calls them by name, which most of all indicates familiarity and often a degree of affection. Shepherds provided an image of intimate concern for their sheep. Calling his own sheep employs the image of shepherds who recognize their sheep and sheep who recognize their shepherd's voice and convey a thought of belonging and intimacy. The fact shepherds being looked down by those of status and wealth in this passage depicts as the Pharisees, I believe this shows their spiritual blindness to who Jesus is. That all they see is someone who is not obeying their rules or the way they interpret God's rules. They miss who he is. I wonder if we sometimes do the same. I wonder how we get stuck on the rules 
or possibly even tradition, rather than seeing Jesus at work. We then have the imagery of Jesus' followers as sheep. Sheep are regarded as the most obedient of animals, submissive to other rules, following the shepherds. Sheep were taught to obey the shepherd's voice and would only recognise the true shepherd's voice. And the shepherd calls them by name. Knowing Jesus' voice means also knowing Jesus, a covenant relationship of intimacy. The other characteristic of the sheep also remained near the rest of their flock and were considered to be gentle. As Jesus' followers, we are depicted as obedient, attentive to his voice alone, and in community with other believers, and gentle. And I wonder how we have fallen short of these things. Times we have relied on the voice of others or even our own. Instead of being fully attentive and obedient to God's voice. Times we have not been gentle. When maybe our tone of voice and words have been harsh and uncompassionate towards others. We then move on to the imagery of thieves and robbers. Thieves and robbers were common and could prove very costly to property owners. The way they are mentioned in this passage refers to those who seek the sheep for their own gain. This is a warning to leaders, to those of us who are leaders, who should take the time to examine our motives. Do we lead for the sake of our own gain? Now the title of Thieves and Robbers was not in any way a friendly image. The fact that Jesus applies this image to the Pharisees would not commend him to their sympathy. Now shepherds had to battle thieves and robbers and wolves for the sheep's safety. Shepherds would literally put their lives on the line for their sheep. In this passage, Jesus is portrayed as having a shepherdly defense of the blind man against the Pharisees, the thieves. As mentioned before, the passage talks about how the sheep know his voice. The formerly blind man had debated with the Pharisees not only about Jesus' identity, but challenged their means of why they believed Jesus was a sinner. The healed man knew what the Pharisees did not. The healed man, therefore, becomes a model for Jesus' sheep who know him and are in relationship with him. The point is that God's true people hear Jesus' voice because they recognised him as the shepherd. Therefore, the very authorities who have excluded the healed man from their synagogue now prove excluded from the people of God because they do not accept who Jesus is. The passage states how Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. So again, Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. Although the previous parable indeed has a door, it is the means by which the shepherd enters the sheepfold. Undoubtedly that the shepherd is Jesus. But now Jesus identifies himself as the gate by which the sheep enter and leave the sheepfold. When the sheep enter into the fold through the gate, they find salvation. They also have access to pasture that nourishes and sustains life abundantly. 
just as Jesus provided wine and bread in abundance earlier in this gospel, he generously provides abundant pasture. This abundant life consists of fellowship with God and fullness of life. This abundant life is what created life ought to be, and it anticipates the blessings of eternal life. Because, because Jesus gives life abundantly, he is contrasted to those thieves and outlaws who come to kill and destroy. In summary, in this passage, Jesus confronts the Pharisees, depicting them as thieves and robbers who seek the sheep for their own gain, which could be further simplified as leaders who abuse their power. There is a characterization of who Jesus is as a caring shepherd and a gate to abundant life. And then Jesus' followers are characterized as obedient, listening to only Jesus' voice and gentle. So what does this mean for us? A little girl running around the supermarket crying, Mom, Mom, where are you? Does not understand that there is more than one person named Mom. She only thinks of her mom. Yet her mom, hearing that voice, knows it is her child. There is no mistaking her child's voice. She knows the sound of her voice. She does not need to see the child to know it's hers. Why? Because of the close relationship they have. Now I'm not a mum, but I am an auntie. And I know the sound of my nieces and nephews' voices. I do not need to see them to know that it's them because of the close relationship we have. There are many voices in this world. There are the thieves voice, the robbers voice, the shepherds voice. The sheep only listen to the shepherds voice because it is a familiar voice that they know and trust. Now, during lockdown, people have talked about how they have experienced this peaceful silence during this time. This has not been my experience. Lockdown has been a time that I have been overwhelmed with voices. I have never been a fan of watching the news, although through this situation, it has become what feels like a necessity to know what is going to happen next. Every time I open my social media, there are a hundred more voices. While some voices are uplifting, others are not. My phone has received the most messages it ever has. And then there is the voices of my own worries and curiosity about what the future holds. I'm not saying that all these voices are bad and you shouldn't listen to them. Some are very uplifting and I myself am listening to the news to keep up to date with what's happening. Yet, I question which voice we are listening to the most. Have you taken the time to intentionally listen to God's voice? To be with him, the one who leads to abundance. Abundant peace, love, and hope, and abundant life. Have you taken time intentionally listening where God may be leading you.
there are many voices in this room. The voice of news reporters, the voices on social media, the voices that uplift people, the voices that tear others down, the voice of our God who speaks life. How are you using your voice? As you listen to the voice of our God, how can your voice speak to those around you, bearing a resemblance to his? How can you use your voice to speak of peace, love, and hope to those around you and lead others to God? Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for who you are, that you know us each by name and love and care for us. As we listen for your voice, may we be a voice that shares about you to others, that shares your peace, love and hope and lead others to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would like to finish with a song, then please pause and click on the second link below. As you go into your week, may you go with listening ears to hear from our Heavenly Father. And may you go with his abundant peace, love and hope. Blessings to you all.